سلام علیکم و رحمت الله سلام بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم All praises are Allah's Lord of the world and may his peace and blessings be upon our master the holy prophet Muhammad and his pure immaculate ahlul bayt The theme was Raj'at for the last seven or eight nights. And we've covered now three different positions in relation to this Shia article of faith, which entails a kind of returning. One perspective was that the purely righteous and the purely evil will return after the coming of the Twelfth Imam. We discovered that position and evaluated it according to different scholars. Then, what, then we covered the socio-political raj'at or the Ahlul Bayt supremacy raj'at where the Shia law, the law of Ahlul Bayt will reign the whole world and we discuss the concept of the 12 Mahdi's in that light the 12 Mahdi's following the 12th Imam and then we covered in two sessions the concept of the Mithali Raj'at and in short whoever understands the verse فَتَمَثَّلَ لَهُ بَشَرًا سَوِيًّا would be able to have a good understanding in relation to what the Mithali Rajat would entail after the coming of the Twelfth Imam. Now, the fourth and final perspective, which I'll be covering tonight and tomorrow, inshallah, the only reason I'm mentioning it is because someone important has raised this, and that's Ayatollah Hassan Zada Omuli. It's his last position on the issue of Rajat. He doesn't necessarily think that the physical Rajat is impossible. And he does favor the Mithali Rajat in many places. But this is his final position. Now, unfortunately, today and tomorrow, it's going to be more of a descriptive talk by me. I won't be able to really explore this position because no one has. And since it's his last position and he hasn't written about it after that, and when he's been out of the public for the last 15 years, this position needs defending. He has to defend it. I mean, there are so many questions that can be raised here against this theory. And although I've had three of my ustads or his students, one of them a very good student of his. But still, it's, you know, some areas remain unexplored. And therefore, this I won't be able to evaluate as deeply like the other three. However, it's w worth knowing, but more importantly for our, the next two days, there are some questions which are related to this concept of Rajat, this fourth position. Those questions, at least, we can explore, and they're useful to know. But the position, i just for say what the position of Rajat is, very simply, he says that Rajat is the return of people, namely the prophets and imams too, new prophets, new imams, after the cycle of Adam, when they come, when the cycle of Adam finishes, and this will be explained a bit in a minute, new prophets and new imams will come. And the coming of new prophets and new imams, this is the Rajat which is meant. Now, as I say, you know, we have 600 traditions on Rajat. How you can, you know, put these two, accord these two together? And then we have to see, we believe that Rajat is a purely Shia concept. The Sunnis don't have it. But do the Sunnis un believe in Adams after our Adam, in prophets and imams following after our prophet and imams? These have to be explored. 
But inshallah, I'll explain and describe what this position is today, and then we'll enter two or three related questions, but they are important questions that we have to know. And they may even help in relation to other important themes, such as evolution, if you have a good grasp of those related concepts. Okay. Now, before humans of our cycle were created, or before humans of any cycle, the earth was surrounded by water. The whole surface area of the planet, the whole surface area of it, was surrounded by water. Science can be shown to prove this. Verses of the Quran allude to it and traditions are explicit in relation to it. This view has its scientific supporters and actually I once raised this issue to a sister of this community and she, I think she's the first Iranian who actually went to either the North Pole or the South Pole, I, I can't remember which pole she went, but she's the first Iranian. I, I mentioned this point to her and she made some very interesting comments and then she mentioned, yes, there are such things, she's an expert in glaciology and she said, yes, there are some things that they call the Milenkovich cycles and the cycles that this person, Milenkovich, claims uh, are very similar to this theory. So it's not, not something which is totally out of the you know, ordinary. Now, where the verses and the traditions, that's what I'll be speaking about, they allude to that as a result of a sequence of divinely guided natural events, on the 25th of of the 11th lunar month of the Islamic calendar, the Al-Qa'adah. On the 25th, one year, it doesn't say which year, but one, in one year, the first dry surface area of the planet opened up. Now, some of you may automatically, when I said the 25th of the Al-Qa'adah, said, yes, Dahul al scattering of the earth, scattering of the surface area of the planet, a scattering occurs. And actually it's very mustahab to fast that day. And it has a certain etiquette with a number of actions that are recommended to do, and it's in the Mafwati. In the Holy Quran, chapter 91, verse 6, wal arde wa ma tahaha swearing by the earth and him who spread it. <coughs> Just one point here, whenever you see the word Arad in the Holy Quran, it's usually translated as earth and that's the prima facie meaning, but by earth it doesn't mean the whole planet. Arad, the external meaning of it, is in reference to the surface area of the planet, not the whole planet difference there. The Arabs use another word for the planet. Now, on the 25th of the Al-Ghadir, in one year, long time ago, the first dry surface area of the planet opened up, and that piece of land that opened up was the space that the Kaaba now is located. The space the first space of the surface area of the planet, space-wise, which opened up because it was covered with water. The first area which opened up was the space where the Kaaba is located. Because the building isn't the criterion in Mecca. That building has changed several times. It's been destroyed, built with different stones and everything. That 
area, that space is holy. That earth is holy. And we have traditions. Duhiyatil ard min al ka'abe. The earth scattered starting from the Kaaba, meaning that space. That was the first place in, this, in the wide surface area of the whole earth which opened up, the dry surface area opening up. Everywhere was covered by, by water. Allah's house was to be built there. And this house and this space was to be made the subject matter of a number of important wajib duties. Something significant in that space. In Karbala, Najaf, all these are very sacred places, but they're not the subject matter to any wajib duties, but they're very holy. Now, Ibn Sina, in one of his works, speaks of this in relation to the concept of consecutive qiyamas. Now this is important to acknowledge. Consecutive qiyamas. Consecutive resurrections. We have two forms of qiyama. Two forms of resurrection exist. We sometimes not mix them up, but we regard them as one. We have a physical qiyama where certain events will occur the sun is wound up, wound up, the, the mountains are set moving, if you like. The seas are all merging together. These things happen and delineate the end of a cycle of people also. That's physical Qiyama. And for those people who pass away there at that time, and those who were in limbo in Barzakh, from then on, their Qiyama will start. The spiritual Qiyama. But spiritual qiyama, in general, barzakh and qiyama, happens when one dies. إِذَا مَاتَ الْإِنسَانِ فَهُوَ فِي قِيَامَتِهِ When someone dies, his qiyama starts. Barzakh starts and then the spiritual qiyama continues. It's not a case of waiting for this physical qiyama to, it, to occur. The physical qiyama isn't important here. Spiritual Qiyama is all the events, the judging, the questioning, the serat, everything. That happens after you die. With most people, it starts with the Barzakhi phase, and which is a transitory period to the spiritual Qiyama, which is more refined than Barzakh. But it's all a mythali resurrection, starting from Barzakh. After death, continues Barzakh and Qiyama. That's spiritual Qiyama. That's heaven and hell. That happens after death. But the physical qiyama, yes, a, physic, a set of physical events ought to occur. Now what Ibn Sina wants to say is that that physical qiyama, first of all he says, he uses the concept of consecutive physical qiyamas. It's not only one. What divides these different cycles of physical qiyama is the covering of water. When the water covers the whole surface area of the earth, that's qiyama, physical qiyama. Then, you know, the mountains will be set moving, the seas will all merge. It's all in reference to that. It's describing the status quo when water covers the whole earth. But that's physical qiyama. And then, 
when the water covers the earth, many years later, an opening again starts. An opening of dry surface area. The new cycle of people continue again. With us, that surface area which appeared first was Mecca, and the first person was Adam who was created from the earth of there. It's no problem. It was created from earth. Maybe in the next cycle, when this earth, the water covers everywhere, and then there'll be an opening, that opening may be in another place. And wherever it is, another Arda, another person will be created, and they will be the first prophet for the next cycle. So the point is that there are cycles here. We're in the cycle of Adam. He was our, you know, he was the first human being. We all linked to him. Go back to him. Now in the Holy Quran, we see verses, when the earth is rocked, a terrific quaking. Here the earth again, when you see it in the Quran, the external meaning, the prima facie meaning is the surface area is rocked. Yes, when water covers, that's, that's, what, that, that's what's going to happen. But don't limit these verses only to the physical dimension. All these have esoteric dimensions to it. Remember when we spoke about out of the earth, Imam Khomeini believes that esoterically, as when you want to commentate esoterically, it's the heart. All these verses, if you're only limited to the physical dimension, you're limiting the Quran. Don't forget, every verse, 70,000 dimensions. Okay, we can never say 100% this is the esoteric meaning or commentary, but we can say maybe. Now here the scholars say, the day when the heart trembles, a terrific quaking or trembling. Now this is the spiritual Riyamana. You see? When that embodiment of actions arise. Some people should get a little meaning from that. <coughs> when exiting the heart, remember that dog batan min al ard, akhrajna lahum. When the heart exits from it, its burdens, it's going to be burdensome. All your actions being embodied in the hereafter. Qala al insanu ma laha, what's all this man will say? It's not going to be a pretty sight for spiritual Qiyamah. Anyway, the point is, these verses don't just limit them to the physical understanding. There's a physical dimension, there's a barzakhi dimension, there's many immaterial dimensions. One by one, there's no end. Now, what Ayatollah Hassan Zola has opened up to some extent is that he says, that when the celestial equatorial line becomes aligned with the eclectic, it was difficult to find translation for these terms, because he wrote it in Arabic, and I have no understanding what these you know, axes mean. But when these two axes become aligned, he says all this will occur, all the water will cover everywhere the earth. And he says, scientists have estimated that every 200,000 years this occurs. That you know, the 20% of the surface area which is open today, with time, every cycle of 200,000 years, they merge with that 80% of water, covering the whole earth. 
And this concept of this locking up of the surface area of the earth with water is called this locking up. Ratq. It's in the Quran. This opening is called Fatq. The opening of the surface area. Ratq and Fatq. So, Dahul Ab, the scattering or opening of the surface area of the earth, signifies the commencement of new creation that succeeds the previous Qiyam, the previous physical Qiyam, which is indicated by that total covering of the planet with water. And each cycle of creation starts with the opening of the earth and ends with that physical qiyamah, the covering of the earth with water. Now we don't know how many times this cycle has repeated itself. That much we don't know. But the cosmos always was from pre-eternity. Now this will be opened up tomorrow. There's no such thing as a beginning. It's always been cosmos. This idea that from nothing something was created, that's a deficient understanding, a deficient world view of what is in this cosmos. Because nothingness doesn't exist. You can't point to anything and say, this is nothing. It's impossible. Non-existence isn't a reality. So how do we understand creation? That just with time I'll explain. So these estimates that scientists give that the Earth was created this many years ago, it's okay. But these are theoretical speculations and it's good to know. But you know, don't swear by them. It's not something these are just and they themselves they keep on changing. They, they speak about the Big Bang, it's okay. Know what the Big Bang is. Read it, read about it, but make sure it doesn't go against fundamentally important philosophical principles. But it's okay to know about it. <coughs> okay. Now, and that's one meaning of Rabbul Alameen, the nurture of all worlds, from cycle to cycle, Allah is nurturing these, these worlds. That's one meaning of Rabbul Alameen. When you say the Lord of the worlds, the nurture of the worlds, Rab, that's what he does. This will be made more evident, inshallah, tomorrow. Now this physical qiyama, the covering of the surface area of the earth with water, this theoretically leads to the destruction of all life, especially human life. But Ayat al says, it doesn't lead to the destruction of marine life, creatures living in the sea. They continue. So there is a link through those marine animals. It's not like with humans. Then we start with a new Adam, that's different. Although according to Ayatollah Hassan Zadi, we start with a new Adam. I'm going to introduce a scholar tomorrow where the theory is changing it. But marine life, yes, it continues. There is a continuity in marine biology. In relation to the creation of humans, also, these are, these are just pr preliminary points. I mean, tomorrow, most of these, there's a reason I'm you know, mentioning these, just to gradually get to tomorrow's session, but these are important concepts to grasp. In the creation of humans, we have creation and we have procreation. 
difference here. With procreation, there's always a mother and father. <coughs> and that, in Arabic, is tawalud, not tawalud. Tawalud is creation, like creating humans from earth. But tawalud is procreation. The majority of scholars believe that the creation of Adam, the creation of Eve, the creation of Nabi Isa, salam, these are examples of creation. Tawallud, because there was no father and mother involved. But the rest of us, we were procreated. There's a mother and a father involved. And this Creation and procreation applies to animals and plants too. Okay. Next, we have to. We just you know preliminary points here and there just before we get to the main point. Chapter two, verse thirty-one. Wa in qala Rabbu kalil malaika inni jailun. Recall when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I'm going to assign a successor on earth. Now, here a number of questions arise. When Allah says to the angels, What does that saying mean? Since it's not directly related, if you forgive me, I, I'll discuss that maybe another time. Thank you very much. And then Allah said it to the angels. Here, yeah, this concept of angels, although I've mentioned it here and there, this has to be explored. What these angels are. Yeah. But he says that I'm going to assign a successor on earth. Here, this successor. Khalifa can be viewed in two different ways. Because the question is, successor to what or to who? Either Adam was a successor to previous people in the previous cycle of humankind. Or he is succeeding, being a representative of Allah. Both are possible. Because in the verse it says, I'm going to assign a successor on earth. It doesn't say my successor. Allah doesn't say that. And since it's used in the absolute sense, there are different ways we can interpret this. For example, in relation to the story of Dawood alayhi salam, there Allah, the context is referring that we're assigning him as my successor. But here, a successor is assigned. Either succeeding Allah, succeeding the meaning of representing Allah, or succeeding a previous cycle of people. In either case, the successor and the succeeded must be on a par with one another. Okay, The successor has to be on a par with the succeeded. Now, if one is a successor to a previous people, coming after the previous cycle, Adam is now coming succeeding them, that's okay. It shows that the previous people also, like Adam, who's succeeding them, married and had lives like me and you. And the traditions do support that. There were people like me and you, okay, maybe a bit, their spiritual potential was maybe lesser, but still, they had lives. Otherwise, if they were totally different, it, it wouldn't make sense for Adam to be a Khalifa to them. If he's a Khalifa to Allah, here, 
also he is on a par with Allah in the sense that Allah created him in his own image. Allah created Adam in his own image. This is an important concept. Adam alayhi salam, the perfect human soul, is a manifestation of Allah's attributes. We too have that potential. But Adam was the first human being. Being the first human being, you have to be the per have the perfect soul. Because if the first human being isn't perfect, then he'll have an excuse in the air after saying, well, there was no one to guide me. The first person has to be a true guide, has to be a prophet, has to be a proof on earth. So he was Khalifatullah. We too have that potential though of being Khalifatullah. And we have traditions, this is just on the margin, an ethical point. <coughs> it's one tradition where the Imam says, at times of war, don't stare too much at the enemy. Because that enemy potentially is Khalifatullah. <coughs> true, they're an enemy, but don't hate people. You hate actions, and in war, the whole purpose of war is to end a set of actions being realized. The fact that people die is secondary. That's why they would always say, don't kill. Do you mean a minimum to kill people? Only out of necessity then. Don't destroy plants, don't kill animals. That's nothing to do with war. These are just secondary side effects that result. War is only to put an end to certain ideological thoughts and actions. But we should never hate creation, though. In Islam, we believe in hate the crime, but not the person. This is the truth. Every person is potentially Khalifatullah. Now, possessing these attributes, those divine attributes, incorporating them, being a manifestation of them, this is something which is difficult. If you do acquire them, you become Khalifatullah. The aim is to try and incorporate these attributes within ourselves. Okay, we may never succeed to become Khalifatullah, but being on the path, making an effort, that's important. This human Khalifa, this human successor, now be it successor to Allah or to, to the previous cycle, this human Khalifa needs a place in order to execute one's duties comfortably. That place was designed to be earth, the surface area of earth, by Allah. Chapter 2, verse 36, وَلَكُمْ فِي الْعَرْضِ مُسْتَقَرُّونَ وَمَتَاهُونَ أَلَوْهِينَ On earth shall be your abode and sustenance for a given time. Man needs peace in one's environment to become Khalifatullah, to execute one's duties. It has to be done in an environment where it should be possible to acquire these attributes. That <coughs> environment is earth it wasn't the seas because earth we said is a surface area when we see Arab in the Quran 
it wasn't to be acquired in the seas. It wasn't to be acquired in space. That environment where, which enables us to acquire all these was supposed to be Earth for a given time, that surface area. question is this, that will the mere opening of the first surface area of Earth suffice with respect to the creation of the new Adam? So the, the ratr, the locking of the Earth with my water, and then we said there's a fat, an opening of that surface area. The question is, is that mere opening, will that suffice or must it be more than just opening? And the answer is, no, the scattering must qualify. There has to be a scattering of Earth before the creation of Adam starts. Because that mere opening won't qualify to make the Earth an abode and sustenance for a given time. There has to be a scattering. There has to be some Earth opened up. That's another point. Now, then the question arises as to, were there other Adam and Eves <coughs> created when Adam was created, when Eve? Were there other people who, were they created at the same time for their children, for example, to marry? Or was only Adam and Eve created and the rest procreated? <coughs> This is also something which has to be touched. And actually, there's a difference of opinion here, which we'll go into tomorrow. Alumetabo Taboy believes that no, in the realm of creation, that was only Adam and Eve. Everything else were, everyone else were procreated. It seems that Oytuna Hassanzad is of the belief that it wasn't only Adam and Eve who were procreated, there were others too. But there's no evidence for that. So it seems that Alama's opinion may be predominant here. Although we'll go into that more in Shema tomorrow. That's not to say it's you know impossible for others to have been created at the time, same time as Adam and Eve were created. It's possible rationally. It's just evidence-wise is difficult. In the traditions. <coughs> It speaks of Adam's sons marrying Huris, for example, or Jinns. Now, they're not authentic traditions by any means, but they can be justified in the Erefani sense. And here again, the key to opening this, which, which I don't want to, is again that verse. That verse is the key to many of these dilemmas. In other traditions, there's mention, although the traditions are weak again, there's mention that Adam, Adam's sons married women from the previous cycle. It mentions the name of the previous cycle. That, that will explain maybe the genetic continuity between us and people who lived before 10,000 years of age, ten, before 10,000 years ago. When Adam was speaking 7 to 10,000 years ago, but there were people before. This, this talk of a marriage in one of the traditions that Adam's sons married women from the previous cycle. Now, if we were to accept that, then what about that covering? where the earth is all covered with water. How are we going to explain that? It also needs exploring here. It's not impossible for people to survive that covering. It is theoretically or rationally possible for people from a previous cycle to enter this new cycle. 
No one is saying it's impossible. But anyway, these things have to be explored more. In any case, we have plenty of alternatives. We don't automatically have to go to evolution. Unfortunately, many scholars haven't touched the subject of evolution, as it should be touched. But it's amazing that almost 40 years ago, Mustafa Khomeini, the elder son of the late Imam Khomeini, he did touch upon this, and he analyzed it through many angles. And inshallah, I'll mention some of his commentaries tomorrow in relation to this. Okay, so where were we? The verse. In Ilon fil Khalifa. A bit of Arabic syntax now. In means I. Ja Ilon. I I am Jordan means one who assigns. What is what is Allah assigning? Khalifa fil Arab. Here, in Arabic, when sentences start nominally with a noun, in this case, in ni jo ilo, I am one who assigns, jo ilo being an active participle, in Arabic that's a noun. Here, that verse, or that sentence, what the content of it, indicates permanence and constancy. Means Allah always, from pre-eternity to post-eternity, is assigning successors on earth. <coughs> also suggesting this constancy and this eternity of assigning, that verse is in me, I, Allah is saying this, I am the assigner. As if being Ja'el, <coughs> being an assigner, of successorship is something, an attribute which is essential to Allah, inseparable to Allah. It's one of his essential attributes. As long as Allah is, which, which, is, which is always from pre-eternity to post-eternity, he's always assigning. Because if you assign a beginning to Allah's assignment of successes and don't look at it from happening pre-eternally you're limiting Allah because Allah is always <coughs> manifesting himself from moment <coughs> to moment kullu yawmin huwa fi Weekly translated as every day, he is at task. Kullu yawmin hu fi sha'an. Yawm means manifestation. Yawmuddin, where religion will be manifested in the hereafter. In six days, everything was created, six manifestations. Now, the reason we call the day Yaum is because it's, it thinks, you know, in the dark it becomes, it manifests things to us, discloses things. In every manifestation, from pre eternity to post eternity, moment to moment, who, he, Allah, fi shai, is in dimension. It's all Allah at play, Allah acting, Allah li. Don't ascribe beginnings to Allah. Don't say he wasn't this once upon a time and then he became this. Especially in those essential attributes. You have to be careful not to construct mentally a manifestation less Allah. We don't believe that. It's always manifesting, there's no beginning. As long as he was, there was always power, Allah's power. He was always alive. 
He was always knowing. He was always undergoing. Always manifesting. Eni Ja'elon. This Ja'elon, the assign, the assigner, in this in this context of successorship, he assigns successes. I assign successes. It's something which is intrinsic to me. It's an essential attribute of mine. As long as, whenever Allah was, is, will be, He'll always assign these successes. And that means there were always people. There were always Adams before our Adam. There were always cycles of people from pre-eternity. There'll always be Adams even after our cycle, post-eternally. There's no <coughs> end. Allah doesn't stop acting Allah-li. Now, do we have traditions to prove this analysis of this verse? Yes. And here, Mustafa Khomeini enters the scene with an incredible commentary of this verse, supporting it by traditions. <coughs> he has a tafsir, five volumes, and then he passed away, and was martyred, so he wasn't able to finish it. But there's five volumes. Each volume was a thousand pages, and he wrote it in Arabic. So it's 5,000 pages, and it ends with the 40th verse of the second chapter of the Qur'an. So it's something heavy here. So he only reaches, he only does a commentary of about 47 verses, but 5,000 pages. And inshallah, tomorrow we'll enter this scene.